We often believe that a life of quality, enjoyment, and wisdom are our human birthright and will be automatically bestowed upon us as time goes on. This is false. You and I are overflowing with preconceptions like this, full of useless knowledge. Before we can learn, we have to first empty our tank. The first lesson is that your mind, not other people or your surroundings, is the source of your moods. We need to understand where our thoughts come from, how they arise in the first place. For example, if you have a cold, the physical symptoms tell you that your body needs to rebalance itself. Sunlight, fresh air, simple food. Likewise, social thoughts reflect a conflict with reality. Stress happens when the mind resists what is. A way to get the mind to stop resisting is through meditation. Silence is the warrior's art, and meditation is his sword. With it, you'll cut through your illusions. But understand this, the sword's usefulness depends on the swordsman. If you don't know how to use the weapon properly, it can become a dangerous, diluting, or useless tool. The warrior uses the skill of meditation with skill and understanding. With it, he cuts the mind to ribbons, slashing through thoughts to reveal their lack of substance. The purpose of real meditation is to expand awareness, direct attention, and surrender to the light of consciousness. There are two simultaneous processes with meditation. One is insight, paying attention to what is arising. The other is surrender, letting go of attachment to arising thoughts. The second lesson is what happens when bad things happen to us. Millman tells this story. An old man and his son worked on a small farm, with one, only one horse to pull the plow. One day, the horse ran away. The neighbor said, what bad luck? Who knows whether it is bad luck or good luck, the farmer replied. A week later, the horse returned from the mountains leading five wild mares into the barn. What wonderful luck, said the neighbors. Good luck? Bad luck? Who knows, answered the old man. The next day, the son, trying to tame one of the horses, fell and broke his leg. How terrible. What bad luck? Bad luck? Good luck? The army came to all the farms to take the young men for war, but the farmer's son was of no use to them, so he was spared. Good? Bad? The moral of the story is that everything has a purpose. It's for you to make the best use of it. There are no accidents. Everything is a lesson. The third point is that it's not your bad habits that count, but your good ones. That means your good habits have to become so strong that they dissolve those which are not useful. So often, we become critical of each other's and our own faults. Maybe instead of constantly critiquing what we don't like, we focus more on encouraging what we do. And the more we focus on the good habits, the less time and effort we have for the bad ones until eventually they fade away. When you fail and give in to temptation or fall back into bad habits, ask yourself, did I really do my best? Remember, old urges will arise, but urges do not matter. Only actions do. A warrior is as a warrior does. There are no ordinary moments. Sometimes we look at our day and think, just another day, and this is why we stay mediocre. There's nothing ordinary about any of this. We are alive on a planet that is mostly water, with oxygen to breathe, all while hurtling through space at 67,000 miles per hour around a gigantic ball of fire. Instead of thinking about how mundane or boring your day is, think about the individual moments that collectively make up the day. Turn some of those ordinary moments into extraordinary ones, and it will make a difference in your day and your life. Remember, you can control your efforts, not outcomes. Do your best, but make sure your effort is in what matters. Most of us never learn how to enjoy life, only how to achieve. We spend our lives seeking happiness and yet never find it. This is what differentiates an expert from a master. An expert dedicates his life to training with the purpose of winning competitions. The master dedicates his training to life. He focuses his best efforts without attachment to outcomes, and if you can do so as well, you will understand the peaceful warrior's way. The Happiness Formula Happiness equals satisfaction divided by desires. You are rich if you have enough money to satisfy all your desires. So there are two ways to be rich. You earn, inherit, borrow, beg, or steal enough money to meet all your desires, or you cultivate a simple lifestyle of a few desires. That way you always have enough money. A peaceful warrior has the insight and discipline to choose the simple way, to know the difference between needs and wants. We have few basic needs but endless wants. 
The secret of happiness, you see, is not in found in seeking more, but in developing the capacity to enjoy less. What time is it? Where are you? Remember, the time is now and the place is here. You can do nothing to change the past, and the future will never come exactly as how you expected it. The warrior is here, now. Your sorrow, your fear and anger, regret and guilt, your envy and plans and cravings live only in the past or in the future. Instead of constantly reflecting and reliving the past or thinking about the future, enjoy the present and focus on making the here and the now the best it can be. If this video added value to your life, share, like, and subscribe.